Well, here's the other one. And anyway, so much uh, redneck grease crap still in, uh, still intact. It's been up a little bit. It's been through all sorts of rolling around and damaging, but they're pretty tough. And it's cheap enough to just make one in just a second. And we've got this all painted up red. It's been drying since yesterday, so we're going to start working on this one. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. This is a dual permanent magnet rotor axial flux wind turbine. Got some half inch all thread here. As you recall, I tapped the threads. I'll start threading this in here. I've done these other ones. And to show you what I do, take this down. It gets a little tight. You can, you can usually take two nuts, put them up here on the end. These are some of my tapered nuts that I made. Well, that grabs enough. If you can't, then you stick two nuts side by side, tighten them together, and then crank them down. So right here, I just barely got it going through. I'm going to stick the wrench on it, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five turns into it. And I'm going to take the other nut, and because these are threaded, these are basically what I'm going to call my lock nuts to keep these from turning. These got to be pretty tight. Well, how are you going to tighten them up? I could sit there and tighten everything up from both ends with two wrenches. But we're going to put the box end on here. Hello baby. Alright, so we basically get this on here and like I told you before, impact does a lot more. These most definitely will not turn. <coughs> there we are. And now all five of these are in here. Now what I could do is tack weld here and tack weld here, but if I ever want to take it apart, uh, I have a hard time, so... These are my second favorite beans. These little bitty brown suckers. She puts tomatoes and onions in them. Oh man, they are good. And they are hot. Next thing we need to think about is where we're going to weld the pole for the yaw bearing to the, assemb uh, to the metal works assembly that holds the alternator and the prop and everything, and the tailpiece and all that. Now usually when you make a prop, you turn a bolt, you turn a nut on a bolt, this tightens up. 99.9% .9 of the time, you got a prop that rotates this way when you're clockwise when you're when you're looking at it from the front. So this spins this way. If I mount my pole over here and the wind pushes on this, it's gonna want to turn this way. If I mount it on this side, it's gonna want to turn this way. Which side is the correct side to put the pole for your yaw bearing? This side. Let me explain. The wind pushes on this and it turns to furl out of the wind. The bottom goes up. If I go this way, the bottom wants to go down, forcing the blades into the pole. So, that's a little theory. Do the gyroscopic precession. Go to the right wants to go up. That would mean the pole is on this side. Does the wind will push on this too hard and the pivot is here. It would make it turn this way. This is the side that you want your pole to be on. Okay, so we got some uh, two inch ID pipe here. Right at about quarter inch walls. Got this clamped in here and set up for square cut. Okay, as I was explaining, I'll have to have a pipe on this side, but you can't just weld like this. It's only one little spot. That's not strong. Plus, this also has to be 
tilted forward so that this leans back because the wind doesn't come straight across it comes down about four or five degrees well this is how that's done you go ahead and cut a shape into it to where it does where it fits the pipe now you've got a solid weld so what I'm gonna do is make a bracket out of this piece of pipe and I'm gonna basically trace the same shape but it has to be a few degrees back and to help me make that template, seeing as I got the first one ground and cut, as I put aluminum foil tape, I left the brown paper on it and then overlapped part of it and then I taped it in place, bent it over the edge and I'm going to grind this off with the wheel grinding in that direction towards it to cut this and then I'm going to slide it back and rotate it just so many degrees and I'll have my bracket. Now this pipe should sit off to the side with the center of this about four and a half inches from the center of this pipe which basically puts it about there so I'm going to have about that thick of a piece of metal all the way around in a wavy form that's just a little bit out of phase of this right here which basically this constitutes a, a direct sine wave so anyway I'm going to go ahead and grind this off and I'll be back Just about. Do it. There we go. And all finished off. Now I should be able to slide this back, put a touch of spray paint all the way around, have my pattern, and then cut it off and start to grind it. Okay, like I said, this is a perfect sine wave if I straighten out the piece of tape. I cut it, I line this up, this line right here, and right here I am directly in line to where I was. Now if you notice, when I lay this here, this part right here, I pulled this back a half inch. That gives me, see this is a two inch ID. That gives me two inches, or one inch to the center here, and then one inch to the center of the pipe over here, plus that, and in between this edge of the pipe and this edge of the pipe, it's going to give me right at one inch. Now the one other thing I got to note here for setting this up right, is I want the wind turbine tipped back about four or five degrees so I'm going to rotate the pipe back about four or five degrees. Now I'm going to tape this in place and put the spray paint on and this bracket will hold that wind turbine exactly where I want it. If it's zoomed or not. Okay. You don't need much on here just put the line on it and if you do it thin it's going to dry a little faster. I suggest using a fast dry spray paint. There we go. It's got its base color and everything all set now. That ought to do it. Give it five minutes and it's time to start cutting. Well, I've always said there's a simpler way to do a lot of things. If we look at this, well, how are you going to cut that off and get it to cut like this without a torch? This one was already pre-cut. I just used it to angle and everything cut off, but so what are you going to do? Take the skill saw and cut like this, and then cut like this, and then cut like this, and then do all that grinding? You look at things at a different angle, which I like to do. Part of a sine wave, when it's on a curve, makes a straight line. Cut like this. Flip it over, do the same, and all you'll have is a little triangle point to cut off, uh, to grind off with the grinder. And you can actually cut some of that off just before you uh, cut the whole thing off makes it real fast okay to show you what I've done so far if you notice there's a couple cut lines I started I did the first cut back here leaving a s slight space uh, about like that away from the line then I came back and I just rested on the top and slowly came down made it a lot wider that way the blade won't grab and try to take the saw out of your hand then at that point I can look down here and I can see a straight line down here and get some more of that curve. If you notice I got a little bit down over to here. So that part of it's cut. I'll have a small piece like that to knock off. I'm going to flip this over and do the other side. I'll show you on camera on this one. Well I got a blast uh, shield to cover my eyes but you don't so this 2 liter bottle will do fine. Sorry it's going to distort your image a little bit.
Probably gonna mess the audio up. The sparks aren't gonna stick to my lens. All right, go back to work. See, I got about an eighth of an inch between my lines, so now it's time to adjust. And this is not going to grab, it's going to be easy to play. Triangle right there. Not all that hard to do. Well, as you can see, the last piece that's left over, pretty close to what you needed anyway, but we're going to cut this off because we don't need that. But this piece is still a little hot. See, I got right up next to the line there, right up next to the line there. That's the hardest part to grind. That's all that's left to grind off. And then when you look at it here, it's kind of wide because it's down here. That's an easy grind. So we're going to stick it in here and grind it as soon as it cools. Okay, I had it in the top of the vise, but it makes it want to rock because it's only touching on two points. But if you put it in the vise like this, plus this edge touches over here pretty solid you could hit it with a hammer and it's not going to move anyway we'll show you how to grind Keeping the tip of my blade in line, so it makes a nice flat hit. Okay, I've changed the angles. By cutting it, slicing it like this, it makes the metal look a lot thicker than it is. And this is, uh, with this, if I left it up to here, it's not going to mesh right. I need to cut it up to here then I can angle the back of it so I got some some space to fill with the welding rod so go ahead and grind all the way up to here <clears throat> and I'm going to drag the blade like this but where it touches like this I want a straight line like this so it gets flat That didn't take long at all. That's ready to fit. Thank you.